How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Well, it's Tuesday here on this show, and uh, the good news is I got five hours of sleep last night, so that's a big improvement over four the other night. But still, you have all been warned, and I probably should get a good night's sleep before I... Before I make decisions next time. But anyway, we got a lot to get into here today. Last night was Raw. What'd you think of the Raw show? There are slow and steady changes. It was a it was a three hour show. I would not say it was a great show. I would not say it was a bad show. It was a three hour Raw show. Although the the uh, good thing as we've noted is nothing is being ripped up and torn up and changed. Everything that they built up last week and advertised for this week, they actually delivered. And they are doing a, I don't know how long-term, but they are doing a long-term storyline with uh, Ray and Dominic. They're actually uh, getting the balls in motion as I sneeze. Ready? Hello! Anyway, they got a uh, they got a storyline planned with those guys. So we'll tell you about the Raw show from Monday night. We have also got Jay White off to... Uh, New Japan shows due to heat stroke symptoms. And uh, it's been hot. It's been very hot over there. And a lot of people have been complaining about the heat. So uh, that one doesn't surprise me. Sometimes you see uh, somebody being uh, pulled off shows and they give some sort of excuse. And you're kind of like, oh, yeah, really? I don't doubt this one at all. It's hot over there doing these shows. We've also got NXT tonight. AW, Quake of the Lake tomorrow. We've got... Ratings for Battle of the Belts, Rampage, and SmackDown this week, and plenty more. So if you'd like to give us your thoughts here today, 425-780-7566, 425-780-7566, back in a moment, Observer Live. Is that you furiously typing over there, Mike? It was. What's going on over there? I had some work I needed to get Are you done. writing a book? If I did, do you think it would win the Wrestling Observer Newsletter Book of the Year award? Only if I were the co-author, times? quite uh, frankly. <laughs> Only if I were the. You know what's you know what's funny about being as famous as me? What's that? Well, I like when uh, when people tag me on the internet to alert me that I got a match coming up, like I didn't know. Hey, Brian, did you hear? You're wrestling. Damn right, I'm wrestling. It's a game changer. I didn't even know it was a GCW. I thought it was all Black Label Pro, but this is a GCW Black Label show, which is coming up on September 2nd, Grand Sports Arena in Hoffman Estates, Illinois. So if you're going all out weekend, even if you're going to Rampage on Friday night, Rampage ends at 10 Central. This show starts at 11 Central. It ain't that far away. So you have your opportunity to... Come see me and Filthy. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, me and Filthy. I, I don't know if you yeah. had those times right, but... Uh, no, I did. 10, 9 Central. Be a bad time had by you. I no, know that for it's sure. not going to be a bad time had by me. Oh, you yeah? know what? I will, yeah. admit, I will admit that yesterday I only got uh, four hours of sleep, and so it probably wasn't the best day to negotiate a wrestling match with Tom. I probably should have waited until I had a full night's sleep and I was in a, you know, a competent state of mind. Not all hyped up on five-hour energy. But too late. What's done is done. But the fact of the matter is, the second, the second, and I'm, I, am not, I am not too proud to admit this, the second Jonah dumped that dude on that barricade, I was like, now's my chance, dude. That guy's going to come back from Japan a wreck. A wreck. And uh, I am not above taking advantage of that. So, uh... But you're still his Everyone's friend, like, right? oh, I hope Brian put CDs in his pants. Dude, this ain't a comedy match, you dorks. You know what happened? You know what happened? Well, years ago, years ago, Filthy and I were training together when when I was down in Vegas at uh, whatever, uh, Syndicate or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was me, it was uh, Filthy, and I brought Wang, okay? Because Wang was also training jiu-jitsu, and he was Wang. So it was like, I got to bring this guy. And he was really excited to go roll with Tom, okay? So uh, Tom just ruined Wang, okay? He ruined him. But he didn't ruin me, okay? Now, oh. to be fair, I didn't ruin him either, okay? But this guy goes on the show yesterday, 
And, you know, there's there's two rules. It sounds like comedy, but these are real rules. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. And what happens in the gym stays in the gym. This was a gym in Vegas. And not only that, he goes on the air and he lies. He said he tapped me out. So, dude, <laughs> I'm not happy about that. Uh-huh. And he even admitted he lied later, but, I mean, I'd already opened my mouth. Yeah, but the fact go- of the matter is, yes. that made me mad. You want to know how to push my buttons? Well, that's a good one. And also calling me lazy. Those are the two things. So if you think you see some lazy match, some lazy comedy match with Tom, think again. It ain't going to happen. What about aloof? I'm going to wreck this guy. What about that one? Aloof? Does that, does that apply to you? To me? All? Yeah. Hey, listen, I'm a lot of things. I ain't aloof. You're I a terrible need, friend. I don't, that's for sure. No, I'm not a terrible friend. A terrible yes, friend are. was you, Tom you, lying you on the show said. yesterday. No, you're not. You just admitted that you want to take advantage of a guy who won't be 100% coming back from Japan instead of, like, if you were really this guy's friend and you actually had that much, you know, belief in your own skill and talent at this point in your life. Bro. You know what I'm saying? Let's let's be honest here. Then we're going to move on to actual news. What okay? is Billy Starks going no, to get out Let of Let me this. ask you a serious question, okay? Yes. Do you think that in a fair fight, a 200-pound filthy Tom Lawler versus yes. a 145-pound Brian Alvarez, do you think I got much of a chance? No. Okay. So, he's injured, and he's coming off a tournament. So, if anything, this makes it a fair fight. Right? Who wants to see me go in there and just get slaughtered? Nobody. Don't even open your mouth. Hey, we got other news here. I uh, talked about Jay White. Jay White has been removed from two up. Here's another one. Jay White removed from two upcoming New Japan events due to heat stroke symptoms. Guess who else is wrestling in Japan in the heat? Eh, filthy Tom. Jay White was scheduled to. Re- and actually, this was weird because last night I I saw uh, I, I for some reason I went to um I went to the New Japan <laughs> website for something. It was in the middle of the Dave show. I don't even know what. I, you know what? I, I was going up there to find out when uh, Filthy's match with Okada was. But anyway, I'm looking around on uh, uh, the New Japan website, and I just I fell into a rabbit hole. I don't know what Dave was talking about, so hopefully I didn't miss anything last night. But I'm going to read some of this a little bit later. There's The bio of Filthy Tom is incredible. But anyway, I was up there, and there was a page that said something like, it was like, Jay White pulled from G1 shows. And I clicked on it, and then it had been removed. And I was like, that's weird. And then I looked online, and there was nothing about it. So they must have put it up and then pulled it and then put it up again. But uh, he's out with these uh, heat stroke symptoms. He will be off the August 9th and 10th card due to an abundance of caution. He's also going to be taking a COVID test, although that the first one he took uh, came back negative. And uh, his next tournament match is August 16th. So he has a while. He has uh, almost a week before he needs to be in the tournament again. So this is not going to screw up the G1 at this point. But he is uh, in the lead in the B, uh, B block 4-0. So all the best to Jay White. That sounds like no fun. Should I read part of this bio? Sure. All right. So uh, first off, uh, they had all of the the wrestlers, and uh, you know they have they have the lineup for the matches, and uh, it, it's uh, Tom Lawler teaming with Lois Isaacs, L O I S, maybe it was Lois Isaacs. Something got lost in translation for that one. Then we've got the bio of Filthy Tom. Are you ready for this? Yes. Okay. He teams, by the way, with Lois Isaacs. Okay. Uh, belonging unit, Team Filthy. Uh, signature move, Rear Naked Choke PK. Major title wins, it says here. First New Japan Strong Indiscriminate Champion. You know what I don't describe Tom as it is indiscriminate? No. The leader of... Okay, this is bio. Ready? I couldn't have written a better one. The leader... and Whoever wrote this needs to write a book. Maybe it's your co-author. The leader of Team Filthy, who mows down opponents with joints and sharp blows. He debuted as a professional mixed martial artist in 2007, active in UFC since 2008. At the same time, he joined the American professional wrestling organization MLM in 2017. He won the MLM, I hope Court's not listening, World Heavyweight Championship in 2019. He must have been an excellent multi-level marketer. When he appeared in New Japan Strong in June 
2008, which is off by 10 years, he formed Team Filthy. In April 2009, also 10 years off, he won the New Japan Cup USA and reigned as the first New Japan Strong Openweight Champion. That's so, when this you remember thought his... first entered his head, that, by the way. This is all this coming to fruition. In 2008, in his mind, he, he really did know the UFC was not going to be the answer for him. He had this all planned out. Do you know that long reign that he had as New Japan Strong Openweight Champion and he just destroyed everybody week after week? Yeah. Well, they describe it here. He defeated Satoshi Kojima and others to hold the title for over a year. <laughs> that is the story, everybody, of filthy Tom Lawler. You only have so much. I hope that guy writes a bio for me before that match. <laughs> You're going to get beat by Killer Kelly. You no, know that, right? No. You're going to get beat Mixed up tag. by Killer Kelly. Men versus men, women versus women. All right. Hey, by the way, I did hope. you see Billy Starks uh, take that uh, bump from the top rope to the floor? Yeah, I, I, I'm going to uh, uh, suggest you, you don't do that anymore. Yeah, can you talk to her about yeah. that stuff? Bro, dude, you know the people that have been around here that I've tried to talk sense into over the years? It, it's, it's, yeah. a, it's, it's, a, it's a pointless endeavor. It's a pointless you endeavor. You know, with it being a joint show, the idea that you could actually get skewers... No. In your forehead. Not happening. Bro, stop. This is a mixed tag match. Filthy and I are going to grapple. Yes. Back in a moment. Observer Live. NXT 2.0 tonight. Everybody's favorite show. Tony D'Angelo and Santos Escobar will have their final accord. The heck is that? Zoe Stark versus Cora Jade. We've got a rounds match. Wes Lee versus Trick Williams. Huh? Yeah. Round. Oh, this, this has got something to do with the boxing glove, I assume, not, you know, world of sport. Well, I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Uh, true. And Nikita Lyons versus Keanu James. Oh, boy. Man, oh, man. I can't wait for that one. <laughs> I think Keanu James needs to beat her because Nikita Lyons is moving up to SmackDown for that uh, women's tag team tournament. You realize they called up Nikita Lyons and Zoe St- of all of the people in NXT 2.0. Nikita Lyons and Zoe Stark is a team. I get it. Here's why I get it. In that. what way? It gives them a taste both to be on the main roster. They will probably lose. Who are they facing? Uh, I'd have to Shotzi? find the uh, thing here, yeah. Regardless. It gets them up there, and it gets people a chance, the rest of the universe, to see Nikita Lyons. They are going to rush her and Lash Legend. They have been way too fast. That is going to continue. So to dip their toe in the water to see how the main audience reacts, plus to see Zoe Stark in a main, big stage, main ring, you know, we know she's a good worker. We know she's one of the better ones there, but can she translate on a bigger stage? You know, personality-wise, the look of Nikita Lyons, it's going to get her, you know, a a certain way. But we'll see her in the ring on a WWE show, main show, and I'm okay with that. Because if they're just going to go up and Well, I'll remember you said that for that live match. Because if they're just... Okay, but here's the thing. Of all the women on the roster, at least half of that team, when it comes to Zoe Stark, are you fine with them having a live match? Would you I'm be fine, fine with, with her? I'm fine with Zoe Stark, of yeah. Of course. So you know what's going to happen in that match then. She's going to end up being the workhorse. Nikita Lyons comes in, gets the big spot of like the big roundhouse kick and all that sort of stuff, and hopefully they try to protect their weaknesses the best they can. Well, we'll see now, won't we? Because, look, who else is going to go up, Brian? Gigi and JC, who would actually be a worse scenario? They're, they're a main roster act. They absolutely are. They can't go. Certainly not the way that Zoe Stark can yet. Who else is there? Wait a second. You're telling me that you think that a match with those two would be worse than a match where one half of the team is Nikita Lyons? I think if Zoe Stark... Besides, starts... here's, a, here's the thing. So, uh, first off, I got I got a couple of questions. But who are they facing? I should, we should know that, too. Who are they facing? Oh, my God. I'll find it here. But, like, the point I'm, is... I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry to make you work, wrestling man. The, the, the point is... Well, I didn't have it in... And now you're... you're, you're, you're I got to do this when I'm trying to be telling some story here, whatever. I got no hours of sleep. I still think. God. <laughs> All right. Here's your stupid brackets, bruh. Thank you. We got Tamina and page. Dana versus Io Sky and Dakota Kai. We already did that one. Mm, Alexa that Bliss and Asuka versus Nikki and Dewdrop. 
Raquel and Aaliyah versus Zia Lee and Shotzi. So it's not them. Okay. It's Natty and Sonia versus Zoe and Nikita. Okay. So let Natty and Zoe do a bulk of the work. I mean, the, the point honest of this to is, God, Brian, look, actual... at, look at Monday. We'll get to it on the show, but how good, as good as Dakota Kai and, and Io Shirai are, how good was that match? But which match? Monday? Yeah. The, 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 it wasn't very good against Tamina and Dana, was it? Uh, no. So this looks far worse. I don't... I, I don't agree. I don't well, agree. We'll I, I could be dead wrong about it, but it doesn't really well, matter. Why don't we argue again, this in? Listen. Who else are you going to bring up? Who else? The point is, it's a tournament for the, the WWE Women's Tag Team Championships. So bring up an actual tag team from NXT to Who? be in the tournament. Who? The former champions. Toxic Attraction. Okay. Dude, they were champions forever. How did they not get in this tournament? I get it. But you know what? This is something that we'll end up probably talking about later on when it comes to people's reactions to Karrion Cross and to Dexter Loomis being back. Dude, we'll find out about Dexter Loomis. I'll get to him later. Braun Breaker could be on the main roster right now. Carmelo could be on the main roster right now. I would like to actually get them see more and better seasoning where they're at. And I don't think there's a need to put them up there, even though those are two guys who are the future of your company. They are. They absolutely are. At least on paper right now, they are. So to bring in and bring back a carrying cross that's going to be a body in that mix as you develop these other people and bring them up and bring them up carefully, because that's the other thing, too. People want to see a bunch of names up there, but don't just bring names up and do nothing with them and have them flounder. I want to see them up with impact. I want to see them up with force. And if you can kind of muddy the waters right now by bringing back a Loomis, seeing what you can get out of him, big guy, maybe do something, I'm okay with that. And the same kind of goes with this thing. I don't need to see Toxic Attraction on the main roster yet, especially not in a match with, again, that I don't think is going to be that much better if you do it the right way, which just have Zoe and Natalia do the work and leave the other two outside the ring for the most part. The problem, bro, is a toxic attraction have been on NXT forever. We've seen them champions multiple times. Whoa. There's literally nothing else we can do with them there. But I they, disagree. They're either wait, wait get hold on. Up. That's not true. Take Mandy Rose out of that mix and just stick with those two. And you're telling me those two don't need more experience and couldn't use more experience? Because if you're going to do that, then there's a lot of people that you can let the floodgates down and let come into that, that door. And if you're going to do that, I guess that's okay. But Mandy Rose is the weakest part of that group. Mandy Rose is the one that you've exhausted pretty much all options whatsoever on. So, and there's the other thing, too. She goes up there. I mean, I don't know. If you're going to bring Toxic Attraction up to wrestle in that match then I want to see Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville somehow do something together because that's the only saving grace you continue to have with Mandy Rose. Otherwise, what are you supposed to do with her? They have been uh, they have been there doing tag team matches for uh, one year now. And Gigi Dolan has been in NXT since... Uh, she's been there for a year and a half. How many good matches has she had down there? Well, listen, then then I don't know what to do. It's like at some point she has to be called up to the main roster. How, how long do you want to give her down there? Is it going to well, be like look, Aaliyah hey, where she's there for six years? Because that was no, too damn Aaliyah long, dude. Aaliyah shouldn't be there. Aaliyah shouldn't even be on the main roster. She was there for, for so long they brought her up because they didn't know what else to do for, with her. And then she she's in the position she's on on the main roster. She should be gone, too. And look, if you want to open up those floodgates and let Toxic Attraction in, then you have to let Braun Breaker in. You have to let Well, hold on. I'm not Carmelo even saying Hayes call in. them up, dude. I'm saying have one NXT team, an actual NXT team in the tournament. If they lose, fine. They don't go back up to the main roster. They're just there for the one match in I the guess. title tournament. But Instead I of look. a total random hodgepodge team of, of two people that have never interacted a single time on NXT. Is that too much to ask? I don't think so. <laughs> oh, look at you. All right. Hey, you got the, whatever they call it, Quake of the Lake. John Moxley, Chris Jericho for the interim AEW World title. And, dude, we got to figure out what's going on with this uh, this All Out because we're now, uh, like, three weeks away from All Out. And uh, if if John Moxley wins, is it Punk? Is Jericho winning? If Jericho wins, who's he going to wrestle? What is the plan? We're three weeks away. We don't have a main event yet. 
Jade Cargill versus Madison Rain for the TBS title. Darby Allen versus Brody King in a coffin match. Lucha Brothers versus Andrade and Rush in a tornado tag team match. Ricky Starks versus Aaron Solo. And an appearance by FTR. That is coming up on Wednesday. And we've also got all of the ratings. Battle of the Belts, 437,000 viewers and a point one two. It ranked 12th in the cable rankings on Saturday and was down almost 20% from the last Battle of the Belts. So, uh, you know, I loved that uh, I loved that Takeshita match with uh, Claudio. But at the end of the day, AEW Battle of the Belts was headlined by a Ring of Honor championship match and uh, it didn't do a great number. So I don't know what that means, but it seems, you know, it people didn't want to cold. tune in for an ROH match. It means they're cold and their shoulder programming, no matter what it is, isn't popping right now unless it's a pay-per-view. That's just flat out, that's the way it goes. Because I'm looking at the front page and it's like, well, the audience retention from the previous night's Rampage, which aired on the same station, was 93.4% of total viewers and 80% in the key demo. They put on a show that nobody really wanted to see. Half of their main fan base on Dynamite wanted to see it. And that's unfortunate for them because they are cold right now. And it was a solid show. Nobody should complain about the names that were on there and the the match that was on there, again, for diehards, they were excited to see Claudio and Takashi to go at it. But unfortunately, not enough people did. And I don't know what the competition was like for them. I know the NBA playoffs were going around, you know, last time around when they did almost 100,000 people more. So this is a greater problem than just this show. It is a weekly problem on Friday nights. They have got to figure out a way to mobilize and get the buzz going and get the buzz better. And again, they are a busy program. And unfortunately, sometimes they have so much going on, they trip over themselves and the builds to things and how they go about things. And like Brian mentioned, we're closing in close here. And it's like, what is the status of CM Punk? You know, that better be determined tonight, you know, and to try to figure out where we're at here. Rampage did 468,000, which was up 25% from the week prior. 0.15 and 18 to 49, which was also up 36%. So a pretty good number for Rampage, although still it's 468,000 and a uh, 0.15, so it's not that great. Nice. And then uh, SmackDown, 2.1 million and a 0.49, down slightly. But it was number one in all of television in 18 to 49. Back in a moment with everyone's favorite Raw Report from Observer Live. Report here from uh, Monday night. Everybody's uh, favorite segment here on the show. So we did have an announcement of the tag team tournament with brackets. So that is a that is an improvement that we had brackets. Now what those brackets were, that's another matter entirely. Because uh, forget the fact that we have some random hodgepodge team from NXT in the tournament. Uh, one side of the bracket, we've got... Uh, Io Sky and Dakota Kai, and uh, Alexa Bliss and Asuka. Which, to me, that would be a great final. But they're both on the same side of the bracket. So, I presume Io and Dakota are going to the finals. So, the finals of this tournament, at Clash of the Castle, will be Io and Dakota versus either Raquel and Aaliyah, Zia Lee and Shotzi, Nikita and Zoe, or Natty and Sonya. None of those matches feel bigger than uh, Io and Dakota versus Alexa and Asuka. And actually, I guess the, uh, now that I think about it, I guess that match, the finals aren't at Clash of the Castle because they did an angle at the beginning of the show where uh, Alexa, Asuka, and Bianca came out and Bailey and her crew came out and they agreed to have a six-woman match at, uh, at Clash of the Castle. So I guess that works if both teams are eliminated from the tournament and we just got a spoiler. But otherwise, I guess uh, the finals will end up on, on Raw or something like that. So anyway, uh, that was the opening segment. The only funny thing is uh, a mistake that apparently I made, a mistake that Mike made, and now a mistake that uh, Bailey made, calling them EO and Dakota Sky. And then she had to correct herself that it's Dakota Kai and Eo Sky. Maybe that Eo Sky wasn't such a good idea after all. 
So that was the opening segment. And we had a brawl, by the way, which, uh, you know, was, the sooner they can get rid of whoever's responsible for those. I know everyone just uh, flat out says it's Kevin Dunn. And I'm sure that, you know, he's part of this. But I was told there are other people there that like the shaking and the zooming and the cuts. And that uh, you shouldn't expect that if Kevin Dunn left tomorrow, that it would suddenly we wouldn't have that anymore. People there like it. I have no idea why. It's absolutely horrible. It's vomit-inducing. You have no idea. You can't even see what's going on. It's like, well, are you are you trying to cover for people missing punches or whatever? Okay, well, then maybe don't even have a brawl. Because I can't even see the brawl. You cut the camera so many times, so why even bother? Dude, and they Horrific. cut the camera so many times that you end up catching, you know, huge whiffs and a bunch of, you know, light that comes through punches and kicks because they just randomly cut back and forth. So that happens anyway. It's ridiculous. And we had Seth Rollins and Angelo Dawkins. Last week, Seth Rollins beat Montez Ford. This week, Seth Rollins beat Angelo Dawkins. He beat both of them on successive weeks. So... I, I, I Listen, I shouldn't presume anything, but obviously Seth is being built up for the match with Riddle. Riddle returns next week. They'll do Clash of the Castle. And maybe maybe the storyline is that Angelo and Montez have tried going out on their own, and they didn't do well, so they've determined they'll redouble their efforts as a team. Because I don't want these guys to break up yet. I think they got a ways to go as a team. So I watched it. I saw the finish. I thought, there's a reason for this, but I don't know what it is yet. We'll uh, we'll find out. Match was pretty good. We had Edge and the Mysterios backstage. Edge was apologizing for accidentally spearing Dominic. Dominic wanted to hear none of it, and he shoves Edge and uh, it storms off. And Ray says, "I'll go talk to my son." Kevin Owens destroyed Ezekiel. He beat him up. He power bombed him on the ring apron. Ezekiel sold it like his legs didn't work anymore. They brought out the. Uh, the stretcher, neck brace, stretchered him off. Owens did a promo afterwards saying he wanted to remind people who he was. So it looks like this Ezekiel thing may be done. Things don't look good for this guy, but things do look good for old Kevin Owens. Which is good because a strong, badass Kevin Owens is a good thing. Every once in a while doing the comedy, the stuff he did with Ezekiel shows off how good he can be. But him cutting hard promos, he, he, again... With Triple H coming on board right now for a guy like Kevin Owens, perfect. This is the best you can do with him is make him serious again, make him a threat. We had a promo with the Judgment Day, and uh, this led to uh, Ray telling Edge, I I can't get a hold of Dominic. I'm going to go out there, and Edge says, well, if you need me, I'll be there. So it's Finn Balor versus Rey Mysterio. They got 14 minutes, and it was good early. It was great at the end. They got a bunch of really cool spots. And uh, finally, Priest keeps trying to interfere. Edge runs down. He chases Priest through the crowd. Ray and Balor are in the ring together. And uh, Balor ends up, uh, he tries 619. Or I'm sorry, he tries a coup de gras. Ray avoids it. He goes for the 619. Rhea drags Dominic's bloody body. They got uh, makeup on him. Look like he's bleeding. They drag him out on the ramp. Ray's distracted. Finn hits the 1916, the coup de gras for the win. We never saw Dominic actually getting beaten up. We only saw Rhea dragging him out there. So it looks like they are actually finally going to pull this trigger on the Dominic turn. And uh, and we'll see what they Why? end up doing. <laughs> Dude, it's the same thing. It's like, what more can we do with the Mysterios as a tag team? What's left? It's time what to do more something. What can you do with Dominic? I mean, honest to God. Turn him he- heel and try. I, I Try to do what? I mean, you better put a mask on him, cover him up, because... Going out there and getting yanked up by your hair in front of your family and getting yanked out of a room by Rhea Ripley. And I know that's a big woman and she's strong and she can beat up a lot of dudes. But I mean, come on. And then you go out there and you get dragged out there again. So we're going to go another story with this guy being an acolyte for these people. And then Ray will probably end up saving him. I just I am not interested in Dominic Mysterio in the least. And by putting him in this storyline, Sure, maybe it'll work. But well, yeah, if you're I not interested, have... if you're not interested in the least, we got to try something. You want to just see the same thing you don't care about over Send and over him again? To NXT. You want to bring up people from NXT? There's a guy who could probably use to go down there because what else are you going to do on the main roster? So he's a flunky on the heel side. So what? Well, let's see what happens. Maybe it'll be good. Maybe he'll be a great heel. 
I mean, a lot of maybes we, in this. Hey, world. you know what? We gotta yeah. try. I'd rather try making him a heel with this group than just send him down to NXT without even trying. Maybe he'll be a great heel. Who knows? We had uh, Sarah interviewing Tamina and Dana. My God, this promo. Holy smokes, Dana. This led to Io and Dakota versus Tamina and Dana, and uh, it's not very good. They are trying to have Tamina work like more stiff and, and mean, and uh, it was what it was. For They did have a spot where uh, Io was going to try a uh, the palm thrust, and bro, I don't know what happened, but she did it about this fast. And they just kept going. <laughs> I was like, what was that? So anyway, she finally, uh, Io hit the moonsault. They win. They go on to face the winner of Asuka versus Dewdrop and Nikki. We had an Owens promo, and you could see in the background a car had crashed backstage. But uh, to their credit, they didn't call any attention to it. You had to be paying attention. And uh, Nikki and Dewdrop were checking on this car. I don't know why them. I guess she's a superhero. <laughs> we had they just uh, happened to be there at the time. <laughs> Bobby Lashley versus Ciampa. So that afternoon, Ciampa did this tweet. And he said he was dedicating his match to Harley Race. So, of course, Triple H is a huge, idolized Harley Race. As you could tell by his facial hair for a few years, which looked fine on Harley Race and horrible on Triple H. And the high knee. And uh, they, so they did that. And then, you know, when he dedicated it to Harley Race and came out in Harley Race's robe, I mean, I thought he was winning. And that was the idea. They wanted you to think that this is not just going to be the old Champa, the old main roster Champa, just coming in here and doing the job or whatever. He's going to win. And so watching it, it was very clever. Like they did all of these spots, and you know Lashley would do this, and then Champa would hit it with his NXT finishers, and the re- and, and Lashley kicks out at the last second, and then they do a couple of other things, and then Lashley goes for the thing, and Champa kicks out. And you're like, okay, here it is. Champa hits another one. Lashley kicks out. And even at the very end, when finally there was another reversal and Lashley got him in the hurt lock, they still had uh, Ciampa dance around the ring and his, his foot's going like this. It's about to get on the rope. And he tapped. I thought they did a great job because this entire match, I, I had no idea who was going to win. And I thought it was going to be Ciampa. But uh, it was good. And this was the best thing they've ever done with Ciampa on the main roster. Match was good. Now give and... him a win next week. Give him a win next Hopefully week. Hopefully they do. Somebody. That's all I want. Look, you don't have to have him, you know, face Lashley again, but give this guy some credibility back. Give him a big dub back, you know, coming off that loss. It's how you should do it. And I think they did do a good job that way because I was kind of convinced, too, you're going to do all this dedication to Harley Race, but to Triple H's credit, you know, good. Use it for the heat, but so your your hero didn't actually, you know, the, the sire of your hero didn't actually end up winning the match. I thought that whole thing t- would turn out to be really good. Then we had Omos beating two dudes. It was uh, whatever. I mean, this has nothing to do with Hunter, but he was a little better here. He did a he did a, a fine two on one handicap match, which three six months ago he couldn't do. So, I still don't want to see him wrestle like real matches. Progress. <laughs> it is progress. I don't know why everyone's so against progress. Progress okay, only counts if it's like give me you a know, break. A to the progress Z. of Omos. That's what you're gonna yell. No, I can't believe everybody. No, he is. He's progress. gotten a little bit better, dude. He shouldn't be there, Brian. I know he shouldn't be there, but he got a little bit better. Why is everyone so annoyed at the idea of getting a little because bit better? You're bitching and moaning about the possibility that Nikita Lyons and and Zoe Stark could stand out, and then you go well on the, the same side, and you want to see new people come up. And then it's like, well, man. Hopefully this works with Dominic. You got to do something. You do have to do something with Dominic. Almost, you got to do something. No, well, you don't. yeah, you don't have to call them up from NXT in a hodgepodge match. Oh, if you match. don't have a big man Hollywood match for Omos that can get on ESPN or something like that, then he doesn't need to be there. Well, period. dude, MVP needs some new guys. Period. Okay, fine, but, like, they hired him. They're paying him a lot of money. They're going to do something with him. I want to see him get better. I don't want to see the Omos from six months ago on my TV every week. I'm happy that he's getting a little bit better because I got to watch him every week. (laughs) Dolph Ziggler and Chad Gable, six minutes. This match was great for six minutes. They did all amateur wrestling early. Then it turned into a pro wrestling match. And then in his hometown... 
Dolph Ziggler slipped behind on an angle slam, and he super kicked the dude. He pinned him in the middle of the ring. And then Otis tried to get to him, and he got away. This was good. Then we had uh, AJ Styles versus The Miz. And uh, AJ Styles is great. And Miz was, uh, he was better than usual. Am I allowed to say that Miz is better than usual? Or am I going to get yelled at for that one? I don't even like the guy! But he was better than usual in this match. And uh, they had all sorts of stuff. And finally, he goes for the uh, figure four and had a skull-crushing finale. And uh, he goes for the kendo stick shot, figure four. Styles uh, kicks him into a chair in the corner, hits the Styles Clash, pins him. And then I watch this on the West Coast. So all I heard all day was how subtle WWE was about the uh, debut of Dexter Loomis. So I'm watching it, waiting for this subtlety. And granted, there was subtlety earlier. The car crash was subtle. They did an angle backstage. All of a sudden, some cops run by. That was that was fairly subtle. Bro, this was not subtle. There's a brawl in the crowd. AJ stops celebrating to rubberneck. He's staring at, oh, what's going on here? And then they grab Dexter Loomis. And Dexter's got the giant Dexter face as he's being pulled away. And the answers go, is that? Dex? Dexter Loomis? I think it was Dexter Loomis. <laughs> I'm like, that was subtle! That's... Bro, they hit me over the head with a cement block! But yes, Dexter Loomis is back. And speaking of getting hit over the head, I'm getting hit over the head with his music. Alright, we're out of here. Back in a moment. Observer Live. So, uh, we had a note here. I always tell you guys to sign up for WrestlingObserver.com so you can hear all the shows and read all the newsletters, and grab all the archives. But this person here and others have noted, uh, I'm a subscriber mainly for the purpose of listening to the archives of the Brian and Vinny show, but with the site's recent update, it doesn't let you sort by date anymore. Any idea if this can be fixed so I can listen to old episodes? At the moment, there's really no way besides searching for a date and hoping for the best. Well, there is a way, and I have no idea why this way isn't uh, up yet, because I've asked multiple times. But if you go to uh, archive dot f4wonline.com all of the audio shows are up there and you can sort them by date year whatever archive.f4wonline.com if you go to the newsletters area there's a uh, button here that says newsletter archive which takes you there but for whatever reason on the radio show area that button is not there and I don't know why, and it irritates me. Well, one thing we could also make easier, too, if you're wondering how to subscribe to podcasts, whether you are a subscriber or not, you can search in the little thing with the magnifying glass. You can go ahead and search how to do that. That's something we probably should make a little bit easier for everybody as well, too. It goes to the main site. But yes, archive.f4wonline.com, and you can search the radio archives dating back to, uh, look at this here. It also has a number of shows. We've done 2,305 Brian and Vinny shows, 2,396 Figure Four Dailies, 2,100 Wrestling Observer Live, 3,716 Wrestling Observer Radio. Well, we've done a lot more than lives and will ever be up on that site, that's for sure. And you can also see how many shows. If you're a subscriber, in 2021, you, had, you got 1,224 shows for your $12.99 a month. That's a lot of shows. 2020, you got 1,064 2019, 1100. And you get all of them if you sign up. Over 13,000. Anyway, we got to go, everybody. Thanks for listening. Talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.